All right, let's take a look at 3, 2. We're going to solve systems algebraically here. So last chapter, we found the place where our two lines crossed. Now we're going to figure it out without having to graph it. Okay, so a couple different ways to do it. Substitution is one way. Elimination is the other. And our vocab for this section is equivalent systems. All right, we do have a couple skills that we'll need. Let's find the additive inverse of each term. So additive inverse is what if you added it together would get you 0. So the additive inverse of 4 is negative 4. Take a second, see if you can tell me the additive inverse of 2, 3, and 4. Okay, the correct answers are going to be x, negative 5x, and negative 8y, just the opposite sign of all of those. All right, for 5, 6, and 7, substitute 2y minus 1 in for x and then solve for y. So I'll do the first one with you. Instead of x, sub in 2y minus 1. Put in parentheses, so that's what x is. And then everything else the same. Plus 2y equals 3. So let's clean this up. 2y plus 2y is 4y. We're going to add 1 to both sides. So 4y equals 4. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. And y equals 1. All right, pause the video, take a minute, see if you can get 6 and 7. We'll put the answers up in class. All right, so try 6 and 7. All right, example 1, we're going to use substitution here. So solve the system by substitution. Here's what we need to do. First, get one variable by itself. Alright, so in this case, I think the easiest thing to do would be to get y here by itself. So originally we had 2x minus y equals 7. I can move the y to the other side. So 2x equals y plus 7. I'll bring the 7 over here. 2x minus 7 equals y. And now I have y all by itself. Step 2. Plug that variable whatever you got by itself, into the other equation, all right? Whichever one you didn't solve for. So step two here, we're going to go back to the other equation, and we had 4x plus 3, but then instead of writing y, I'm going to plug in what it equals. 2x minus 7 equals 4. Step three, solve for one variable, whatever you see, because now we just have x's. So we're going to solve for x's here. We've got 4x plus 6x minus 21 equals 4. So we've got 10x equals 25. And so if we divide by 10, we're going to get x equals 2.5. We've got one answer. Step four, plug in to find the other variable. Find the second variable. All right, so let's go back up to the top here. I'm going to take this equation, 2, but instead of writing x, I know that x is 2.5 minus y equals 7. That's 5 minus y equals 7. Negative y equals 2, so y equals negative 2, and that's our second answer. All right, and so 5, we can always check both equations by plugging back in. All right, so let me erase this to get some space. I'll erase everything but our answers. Erase. It's not behaving itself. There we go. Nope, oh, erase. There we go. There we go. That's enough space. All right, so let's check it again. Four times two and a half plus three times negative two. That is ten. This is negative six. Does that equal four? 
Yes, it does. Let's check this other one. 2 times 2 and a half minus negative 2. Does that equal 7? This is 5. This is plus 2. Does that equal 7? Yes, it does. So we've checked both options. We know that we are correct. Y is negative 2. X is 2 and a half. All right, so those are the steps. See if you can do it for these two, 1A and 1B. Give that a shot. Okay, example, real world, let's see if we can set one up here. Refer to the photo at left. So that is just a fantastic 1980s Jane Fonda workout video going on here. The cost of membership in a health club includes a monthly charge and then a one-time initiation fee. Find the monthly charge and the initiation fee, and here's what they're paying. All right? So a monthly charge is going to be something X, right? We don't know exactly what it's going to be, right? But if we pay that monthly charge... For two months, so two times x, plus we had to pay the initiation fee, then we would have ended up paying $100. The other one says if we were paying the fee for six months, plus that initiation fee, we must have been paying $200. Alright, so let's solve this by substitution. I'm going to get y by itself up at the top by moving the 2x to the other side. y equals negative 2x plus 100. I'm going to substitute that in down here, 6x instead of y. I'm going to plug this in, negative 2x plus 100 equals 200. I'm going to solve for x. 6x minus 2x is 4x minus, nope, plus 100 equals 200. So 4x equals 100. x equals 25. We've got one answer. Let's go back in up at the top and figure out what y is. 2 times 25 plus y equals 100. This is 50. So if we subtract 50, we're going to get y equals 50. So it's 25 bucks a month, $50 to start in. Let's check both of these just to make sure. 2 times 25 plus 50. That's 50 plus 50. Okay, does that equal 100? Yes, it does. Let's check the other one. 6 times 25 plus 50. 6 times 25 is 150 plus the 50. Does that equal 200? Yes, it does. So we are correct. All right, so same thinking. See if you can solve understanding check number two. All right, example three here and out of five. Okay, a couple more to go here. Solving by elimination. Second option. Okay, elimination works if you can line up one of your variables with exactly the same coefficients but opposite signs. Okay, one's a, so here's what we got. The y's are lined up. Two and two, we got exactly the same thing, but one's a positive, one's a negative. What we get to do now is eliminate by adding straight down. 4x plus x is 5x. Negative 2y plus y goes away, and we get 10. Look at how quick that is. If elimination works, it's really fast and easy. x equals 2. We've got an answer. We just need to go back in. We can pick any equation. Let's use the easier one. 2 plus 2y, just plugging 2 in for x, equals 3. So 2y equals 1, so y equals one half. That's our answer. Let's check ourselves. Four times two minus two times a half. So that's going to be eight minus one, and that does equal seven. That's what we want. And then we're going to have two plus two times a half. And so that's two plus one. And does that equal three? Bingo, yes, it does. All right. So if they're already lined up like they are in example uh, A, quick and easy. The only thing on B, we're going to want to change the signs here at the bottom. So for B, let's make the 4x a negative 4x, which makes this a negative 6y, which makes this a positive 2. Okay, and then we could add straight down. So take a minute, solve those. 
All right, example four. We're going to start dealing with equivalent systems where we have the same solution here, okay? So on this one, what we're going to need to do is the additive inverses. This is what we did before. 3x doesn't cancel out 5x. 7y doesn't cancel out 2y. We're going to need to find an additive inverse here and multiply so they line up, all right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to solve for y's here. I'm going to need to multiply the top line by 2, and I'm going to multiply the bottom line by negative 7. So by doing so, I'd have 6x plus 14y equals, and here's where people always forget to multiply the last one, equals 30. And then I've got negative 35x minus 14y. So there's our additive inverse there. The y's, same exact number, but one's a positive, one's a negative. And this is 28. If we add straight down, we get negative 29x equals 58. We divide that, and that comes out clean as x equals negative 2. Love it when it works out nice and pretty. So we're going to go ahead and plug it back in. Let's do it with the top one. 3 times negative 2 plus 7y equals 15. That's negative 6 plus 7y equals 15. So 7y equals 21. So y equals 3. Two answers. We can check them both. 3 times negative 2 plus 7 times 3. That's negative 6 plus 21. And that does equal 15. Let's check the other one. 5 times negative 2 plus 2 times 3. So that's negative 10 plus 6, and we want negative 4, and that's what we get. All right? So we can always do elimination. We just need to make sure that at least one set matches up. So you're going to do the exact same thing, but try to make the x's line up in this example. All right? So I made the y's match up. You make the x's match up. Should get the exact same answer as what we got when we did example four. Give that a shot. All right. Now, some answers are going to have... Uh, without a unique solution, we're not going to be able to get one exact answer. All right, so what we could have here is something that always works or never works. All right, so let's see what happens here. On A, we are lined up, ready to go. We're going to add straight down. The X's cancel. The Y's cancel. But on, and this cancels all the way out. Everything cancels, right? If you looked at all the numbers are the same, and all the signs are opposite, plus versus minus, plus versus minus, plus versus minus. When is 0 equal to 0? Always. 0 is always equal to 0. All right? So this is always true. So what we say here is our old friend, all solutions. If we get 0 equals 0, we say all solutions. We'll take a look at this next one. We add straight down. The x's go away. The y's go away, but uh-oh, these don't go away. We get 12 here. When is 0 equal to 12? Never. All right, so our answer here is our old pal, no solution. If we get two numbers, no x's, no y's, equal to each other, that can never be true. So we'll say no solutions on that one. All right, so I'm betting 5 a and b is either all solutions or no solutions. Try those, see what you get, and we will talk about this in class. Good luck.